Good morning, Nuggets. Today's grammar mini lesson is going to focus on identifying nouns. Your objectives for today, you should be able to tell me what a noun is, give me reasons why nouns are important, identify nouns in sentences, and there are a number of important terms that you should be able to define by the end. Some of these should look familiar. For example, I would assume that most of you already know what a noun is. That may beg the question, why are we even talking about them? The reason why we're reviewing nouns is because a number of the grammar uh, lessons that will follow this one, you have to have a strong mastery of nouns. So this is why we're doing the review. You should know what an article is, a framed sentence, a morpheme. This might be a new term for some of you. And you should be able to tell the difference between plural and possessive nouns. So first, mini review. What is a noun? A noun, as you all know, is a word that names a person, place, thing, or idea. People, that's very easy to identify. You can see examples here, sister, Uncle Abdul, a contestant, or friends. Notice that the people can be non-specific, like sister or friends, or they can be very specific, as in Uncle Abdul. We would call Uncle Abdul an example of a proper noun, and we'll hit that when we review more on how to capitalize nouns properly. Places, same thing. Notice the more general terms are not capitalized. House is a common noun, whereas the country Malaysia is capitalized because it's a very specific place. There's only one. Things, again, are mostly objects, usually very easy to detect. And notice that things also refers to things like months or days of the week, and those are proper nouns. Ideas. Ideas can include anything that is a concept, an emotion, or a state of being. For example, happiness. That's a concept. You can't see it. You might be able to see a happy person, but you can't actually see happiness itself. Okay. Uh, as we go through these slides, any terms that are new, you should jot down in your composition book because you will be quizzed on them at the end of the mini lesson. You'll be going to Quia. So at any point in the video, if you need to take notes, just hit pause and then resume when you're ready. All right, here's a big question. Why are nouns important? In the next few lessons, we're going to be focusing on subjects, objects, different cases and tenses. And all of these different things aren't possible unless you really have a strong and firm understanding of what a noun is. Uh, so here are the big three reasons. First of all, nouns are the actors or the main players in your sentence. They are what the sentence is about. They are what are doing your verbs or what your verbs and adjectives are about. Uh, in order to uh, identify your subjects and objects, you have to be able to identify them as nouns first. And last but not least, if you're able to identify your nouns and your actors and sentences, you're able to have the versatility to rearrange and revise so that you'll be able to write longer, better, and more interesting sentences, give you a little more variety and zest to your writing. So these are the three reasons why nouns are important and why we're doing this review. Okay, again here, you see the definition that we just talked about, and you see some more examples. At this point, take a second and see if you can add two nouns to each column of the chart. You'll probably have an easy time with persons, places, and things. Ideas might be a little bit more tricky. Also, look to see what nouns on this slide are improperly capitalized. You may pause the video here if you need to. Okay, now the nouns that you came up with will no doubt differ than the ones that you see here on my slide. But just some examples, I came up with teacher and Julie. Notice Fred and mom are both capitalized. That is correct. Julie is capitalized. That's because those are proper nouns. We're referring to one specific individual. In your B column, places we have school, park, forest, beach, Potomac, and Italy. Notice Potomac and Italy are both appropriately capitalized because they are specific proper nouns. The problem that we have with beach, do you know which beach we're talking about? 
No, it could be any beach. So this word should not, in fact, be capitalized because it is a common noun. Next, in our things category, we had toothpaste, wallet, book, money, tape, and basketball. None of these terms have a brand name. For example, I don't say scotch tape. If I did, scotch would be capitalized. I don't say the title of the book. Otherwise, it would be capitalized. Same thing with toothpaste. I don't say that it's crest, so it's not capitalized. Money, in this case, should not be capitalized because it is a common noun. In your ideas categories, all of the examples here are common nouns. Honesty, peace, truth, beauty, optimism, and anger. Um, those are all emotions, ideas, states of being. An example of an idea that would be capitalized might be the name of a religion. For example, Islam or Buddhism. All right, one good way that you can test yourself. Occasionally, you will be uncertain. All the examples we've looked at thus far have been fairly straightforward. But if you ever come across something and you're not sure, a frame sentence is a good way to determine whether or not it is indeed a noun. So in the frame sentence, you're going to just plug in the word. And if it fits this sample sentence here at the bottom, you will be able to tell, yes, it's a noun. So here's an example of how that works. If I were looking at this sentence, the old car chugged along, I'm pretty sure that car is, but I can test that by plugging it into my frame sentence. The car seems all right. That sentence makes sense, so it is a noun. But let's say I'm not sure whether I should also underline or circle the word old. So I plug in old. The old seems all right. That doesn't make any sense because old is not a noun. It's an adjective, so it doesn't fit the frame sentence. So that's one way that you can use to determine whether something is a noun for sure or not. There are some other rules of thumb that you can use when identifying nouns. Um, it has to fit the frame sentence, and it will usually have at least one of these other remaining characteristics. Uh, it might end with something called a noun making morpheme. Morpheme is just a fancy schmancy word for a select group of letters. Uh, an example over here that you can see is government. Uh, govern by itself is a verb, but if I add M-E-N-T at the end, I have now taken this and turned it into the noun form. So there are a lot of morphemes that exist. Uh, meant is one example. Uh, the morpheme T-I-O-N. Uh, for example, I could say I am exhausted. Okay, Exhausted being the adjective in that sentence. But if I said exhaustion, T-I-O-N, now I've turned it into a noun. That's how a morphine works. Uh, nouns can also be made plural. That's usually another dead giveaway, governments. It can also be made possessive. A noun can have some type of quality or own something. And when it's possessive, that means you're showing ownership. And so in those cases, those instances, you'll see an apostrophe S, as in the example of the government's decision. Uh, the last fail-safe test that you can use is that a noun will usually follow an article. Not always, uh, but often. And articles include the as in the government, a government. And if the noun begins with a vowel sound, then you would use the article an. For example, an owl. I say an owl because owl starts with a vowel sound. We have the o. So those are four rules of thumb in addition to the frame sentence that you can use. Now let's test your skills. In your notes, or on a scrap sheet of paper, read each of the following sentences and see if you can identify the nouns in the sentences. So I'll read these three and just jot down the nouns as you see them, and then we'll check and see how you did. Number one, businesses sometimes use gigantic objects to advertise their products. If you need to pause at any point, feel free to pause. Two, a stand that sells fruit might look like an enormous orange, complete with doors and windows. Again, feel free to pause. A restaurant in Austin, Texas has a delivery van shaped like a dinosaur. Pause, make sure you have all the nouns written down before uh, hitting play. 
Okay, check yourself. How many of them did you catch? How many of them did you miss? Go ahead and hit pause so you can correct your work and add any that you missed or cross out any that shouldn't have been marked in the first place. All right, here are two more for you to practice with. Same procedure. Pause when you need to, when you're ready to resume, and check your answers, then hit play. Sentence four, huge dogs, windmills, and figures of Paul Bunyan are formed with cement or fiberglass to help sell chainsaws, trucks, and souvenirs. Number five, an old hotel in New Jersey was even built to look like an elephant. Go ahead and pause here before seeing the answers. Okay, here's what you should have marked. And it looks like this is a little bit different than the previous slide, but that's okay. Uh, these are some examples. We have family in the sentence, excitement, and vacation. We also have hotel, New Jersey, and elephant. Notice that we in both of these sentences, neither one is marked. That's because we is an example of a pronoun. A pronoun acts like a noun and it takes the place of the noun. That way we're not repeating ourselves over and over again. For example, you wouldn't want to say, our family was filled with excitement when our family went on vacation. That would be very redundant and obnoxious. Uh, to go back to the previous slide, you should have marked dogs, windmills, figures, Paul Bunyan, cement, fiberglass, chainsaws, trucks, and souvenirs. And in number five, hotel, New Jersey, and elephant. At this point in time, you should go to our web page and you should take the grammar mini lesson checkup that will be posted at the top of the page. Talk to you soon. Bye.